If you are running a Google Ads shopping campaign, you're running it for one reason and one reason only, and that is to sell more of your products. But unfortunately, many people right now aren't having any success with Google Ads. At best, they're breaking even, but in a lot of cases, they're actually losing money. And if this is the situation that you currently find yourself in, stick around and watch this video because right now, I'm gonna be sharing with you the top five optimization tips and strategies that you need to be making in your Google Shopping campaign. But before we get into today's Google Ads tutorial, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. Now, as we go through today's training, you're gonna see that I'm gonna be referencing my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. Now, this is a checklist that I've put together specifically for Google Ads e-commerce campaigns. And this checklist lets me know exactly what I need to optimize in my Google Ads e-commerce campaigns every 72 hours, every week, every month, and every 90 days. And if you wanna get a copy of this e-commerce Google Ads checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below and you can get your own copy today. But right now, let's get into those top five ways that you can optimize your Google Shopping campaigns. And the first one is, is that you need to review your product titles and your search term audits. Now we know that with Google Shopping campaigns, rather than you entering in a group of keywords that you want Google to target for your products, Google does this keyword targeting by looking at your product titles, your product descriptions, and also the content which is on your product landing page. And this is the data that Google grabs so that it knows which are relevant keywords to target your shopping ads. However, the problem with this is that when Google completes this targeting, the targeting of keywords uses a broad match keyword targeting. And the problem with that is, is that means that your products will be searching for a lot of similar and related search terms. So not the exact search terms which describes your product. With the issue being, is that Google could be actively targeting keywords which you know are never gonna convert. Because yes, while they may be similar or related to your product, they are a completely different product with different target markets. And the time that it takes for Google to work this out, you've potentially already lost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So to stop this from happening in your campaign, what you need to do is you need to go through and review your search terms and then also review your product titles. And I do need to stress that this is for a standard shopping campaign and it won't work if you've got any current smart shopping campaigns which have now converted over to Performance Max campaigns. And let me show you how to complete that review. So this was a product that we identified had some wasted spending in our Google Shopping campaign. And the way that we found this is that when we went into Google Ads, into our shopping campaign, Campaign under keywords and then reviewing your search terms, we found that there was a whole lot of search terms which were related to all blacks but not a baby earmuffs. And just in case you're not aware, we were selling kids earmuffs, but this product was a trademarked product in collaboration with the New Zealand All Blacks, which is a rugby team. And what was happening is that from this product title, although we did say kids earmuffs, it also included All Blacks. And when you went over to the search term history for the shopping campaign, you could see that Google was showing our ads for a lot of unrelated search terms, like All Blacks Baby, All Blacks Backpack, All Blacks Onesie, even down to All Blacks Props, and people asking about All Blacks Rugby. When in fact, the only keyword that was relevant for us was this one right here, All Blacks Headphones. So what we went through and did is we selected some of these search terms, which were not relevant, and then added them as a negative keyword. And if you can look over here during this period, you can see that we weren't getting a lot of clicks, but what I was concerned about, and the reason why I still filtered these out, is because these were adding in multiple impressions, which was lowering our click-through ratio, and then lowering our overall performance. Because remember, as I always say, Google Ads rewards ads and campaigns with a high click-through ratio. So by adding in these extra negative keywords, we're able to successfully still market this product without the product showing for unrelated search terms. So with your shopping campaigns, make sure that you're always going through and reviewing those search terms so that you can see and be sure that Google isn't targeting unrelated search terms because it deems that those search terms are related to your product title. And then secondly, the second core optimization that you can make in your Google Ads campaigns is to optimize by locations and devices. Now with this optimization action, I do say that you do need to wait at least 60 days so that you've got enough data to be able to review some significant variants 
for your locations and your device data. Because what you're looking to do here is you're looking to review the data down by conversions, cost per conversion, and also your conversion value cost scores to see if there's any significant difference in different locations. Say for example, is there a difference in the conversion data by people who are searching for your products in London versus someone who is searching for your products in Manchester? And if you find out that you're seeing a high cost with no conversions in London, but a lower cost and a higher level of conversions in another city like Manchester, you can then divert your budget to that better performing city. And the same goes for your device targeting. If you see that you're getting much better results on a tablet or a mobile device versus a desktop, you can then either exclude or focus more bid optimizations and therefore more spending on your higher performing devices like your mobiles and also your tablets. And I will make one important note here. While this isn't always the case, I've generally found that if you're selling a more expensive product or a highly technical product where people want to see large amounts of data around the product specifications and also reviews before they make that final decision that you will generally see higher conversion rates and better performance on a desktop because it's an easier viewing platform for people to be able to zoom in on larger photos or read larger amounts of product specifications. But right now, let me show you how you can review your location and your device targeting data. So to review your locations data, you wanna go into this show more setting after you've selected your individual campaigns. And then when you're in show more, go into locations and then click on this locations tab. And this will bring up all of your individual locations data along with the different clicks and impressions. Now, I I've selected shopping campaigns here. So this is bringing up all of my individual shopping campaigns in this account. But if you wanted to, you could review this by an individual shopping campaign. And as you can see through here, I've already added in some different bid adjustments. Now with these bid adjustments, by adding in a positive bid adjustments, it's focusing more budget in on these areas. And the way that I go through and review this is I firstly review it by the conversion value cost. And what I'm looking at here is at locations that are outperforming the conversion value cost for the total a campaign. So you can see with this collection of campaigns that are at a conversion value cost of $13.91, whereas some of these different areas are up to 90, 81, 70, and then they go down from there. And then from there, if I do see some different ones that I wanna add in some extra bit optimizations, I just select edit, and then I can add in an extra bit adjustment. Now you may be asking why I haven't added in a bit adjustment for this top line because it does have the highest conversion value cost. And the reason for that is because we've only got a limited amount of data of 232 impressions. So this is highly swayed just by one conversion. The other area that I look at is I then also look at the cost. Once again, making sure that the highest cost areas are giving us a reasonable amount of conversion value cost. You can see in this top line where the majority of my cost is coming from, I haven't added in a bit adjustment here because it's performing on account average. So I'm going down some other optimized avenues for this one. And then finally, I will also look at the cost per conversion. And this is where I just, once again, make sure that I'm not focusing budget on areas that have a high level of a cost per conversion. And then once we've looked at the locations, we just need to go down and look at these devices. And then this brings up that same level of data, but rather than looking at locations, we're looking at the difference between mobile phones, computers, and tablets. And bringing this data down to an individual campaign, you can see for this one, I haven't added in any extra bid adjustments and the reason for that is because we're still collecting data. As you can see on this one, tablets are outperforming the others with a higher cost per conversion and also a higher conversion rate, but we've got a lot less data in that we've only got nine and a half thousand impressions for tablets, whereas computers and mobile phones have much more at 85,000 and 153,000 impressions. So what we can do in this case is we can add in a little test where I'll just add a smaller increment of 5%. I can then come back and review this in another 30 or 60 days. And if this trend has continued, I can then start to be more and more aggressive about my bid adjustments for the higher performing devices. And now we come to our third optimized action, which is optimizing your Google Shopping campaigns by audiences and detailed demographics. For all Google Ads campaigns, especially shopping campaigns, you need to remember that we're not only using keywords in order to target different ads, because one of the best way to improve the performance 
of your Google Ads campaigns, especially those shopping campaigns, is to target your products in and around different audiences. And the first step in this process is to make sure that you're putting in that manual request to Google saying that you want to get the data for different levels of audiences. And the reason for why I phrased it like that is because a lot of people misunderstand what you're doing when you're adding in audiences. Because unless you're running a targeted shopping campaign, and the truth is, is that most people are running observation method campaigns when it comes to shopping, because that is the default setting for your audiences. This doesn't mean by adding in a selected amount of audiences that Google will only target those audiences they're gonna be going out and targeting different levels of audiences. By adding in those manual audiences, what we're requesting of Google is we're asking Google to give us that data, to break down that data, the number of clicks, the number of impressions, the conversion rate, the cost per conversion, the conversion value, all of that really valuable data, we're asking for that to be seen not only at a campaign level, or an ad group level, but also at an audience level. And this is when you can start making those high level, really powerful decisions that will change the course of your account. Because if you see that Google is targeting a level of audiences or detailed demographics, which have a high cost, but a lower conversion value, you can then either exclude them or lower the bid adjustment so that you can then allow for more spending to be on those high converting audiences. And then taking it a step even further, if you've got three or five or six different audiences, which is generating the vast majority of your conversions and your conversion activity, you can then break them out into a separate shopping campaign, which is then set by targeting and not by observation, so that you are only targeting those high converting audiences. But in the first place, if you don't request that data, you will never know. So you can't go through and make any of those high level optimizations. And remembering that the key for success in Google Ads is to be able to see the data, review that data, and then make the necessary optimizations and changes so that you can increase the performance of your Google Ads account. So right now, let me show you how you can go through and not only add in those manual audiences to your shopping campaigns, but what you need to be looking out for so that you can make some high level optimizations. And for this action, we wanna go into our audiences. And then from here, if you go to show table, you can firstly see if you do have some different audiences added. What the goal is here is that when you go down to the bottom, go over to your clicks and impressions. And ideally you would like to have at least about 80% of your clicks and your impressions coming from added audiences. So with this account, you can see that we've got some extra work to do because in the shopping campaigns, we've got a total of 1.2 million impressions and we're only getting about half of those at 600,000 in our added segments or audiences. So to add extra ones, all we'd need to do is to go and select edit audience segments, choose the campaign that we wanna select them to. And then from there, we can start going about and adding in some extra audiences just by selecting these here. A great option to go to as well is you go into the browse function, go into this detailed demographics tab, and then just start to add in some different demographic data, especially around whether they're parents, also whether they're married or in a relationship. You can also go into the home ownership status, and then you can also add in some extra targeting in and around employment, so the level of company that they work for and what industry they work for. And even if these are industries that you're not targeting specifically, remember this is going back and giving us some extra data about the people who are interacting with your ads or purchasing your products. Then press save, and then from this point, we will start to get some extra data. Now, once we've got this data coming through, we can follow that same process of what we did for the device targeting and the location targeting. By going down and filtering this down by our conversion value and cost, or also our cost, and then going through and adding in some extra bit optimizations to either increase or decrease the amount of spending that is occurring in these different audience segments. And then this brings us to the fourth key optimization action that you can take to improve the performance of your Google Shopping campaigns. And this is something that I like to call cleaning your shopping feed. Now, for those who have followed my channel for a little while, you know that I talk about a lot when it comes to search campaigns of completing a search term order, in that you go through and add in some extra negative keywords to filter out those search terms which are not relevant to your campaign. And cleaning your shopping feed essentially works the same way, except we're not doing it at a keyword level, we're doing it at a product level. And very simply, this is the process where you go through and review your individual products and then exclude any products which is seeing a high level of cost 
but they're just not converting. And then by excluding those individual products, you're forcing Google to test some different products, whether it be different product, product colors, or styles, or products which have a different type of image, so that you can see if that positively affects your click-through ratio and ultimately your conversion rates. And to complete this action, all you need to do is you need to go into your product groups. And if you're seeing only in all products, you can just go into everything else in all products, all these individual product groups, and you can click this pencil icon to add in an extra subdivision. I've already done this in here. And what this has done is that this has pulled out all of the individual products so I can see the individual products, clicks, cost, conversions, and also the cost per conversion value. And what I'm looking through here, so what I wanna do is I wanna filter this by cost, where I'm seeing the products which are spending the most amount of money, and I'm having a look here to see if I'm getting any conversions from these. So for example, you can see down here, our fourth highest spending product has a lower conversion value cost than the rest of this campaign. I've only got a small amount of data here, so I'm not gonna exclude this product yet, because the one thing you do wanna take into account is that before you started to make some decisions for excluding products, you'd want to be seeing around about 5,000 impressions over a 30-day period before you took the action of selecting this product and adding it to the exclude list. And now we come to our fifth and final optimization action for your Google Shopping campaigns, and that is to go through and check your competitors' pricing. One thing that you need to always remember with Google Shopping campaigns is that they are heavily driven by price. And the reason for that is because the way that your ads are displayed, they have three core elements of your product image, your product title, and also your product price. So if you've got a competitor or a reseller who's currently marketing your same product via Google Shopping, but they've just added in a small discount, and sometimes it can be as little as 5% or $5, it's highly likely that you can start to see a decrease in the performance of your campaign. And this is because when people are completing a Google search, they'll see your product versus someone else's product, they'll see the lower price and they'll go through and click on that item. Now they may come back and click on your product as well, and if they don't see that there's enough difference between those two products, they'll go back and purchase that product with the slightly lower price. Meaning that you end up in a situation where someone has clicked on your ad, come to your website, but they don't complete the sale because you've got a competitor or a reseller undercutting your price. Now I wanna make this very, very clear. I do not agree in you running in a race to the bottom by just lowering your price, lowering your price. I don't believe that's a good way in running your business because ultimately you wanna be making sure that you've got a healthy profit margin for your individual products. But if this is the case, there's a couple of things that you can do. Firstly, you can divert your budget to other products. So if you've got those competitors and resellers only running sales on a certain level of products, you can then look at your campaign and move more budget in your shopping campaign over to other product categories which don't have as much competition in the market. Or if you've only got one or two product categories and that is an option for you, you can divert some of your budget across to other types of campaigns like a search campaign which is a great option for e-commerce campaigns and the reason for that is because you then get those extra headlines and descriptions and call outs and other site links so that you can sell the individual uniqueness of your product, those USPs, and you can justify why you've got a slightly higher or even a significantly higher price than your competitors. But I did just wanna mention that because that can sometimes be a reason for why your campaign isn't performing for a period of time. Once again, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure to teach you on how you can improve your shopping campaigns. And also, as we come into this Black Friday period and also the sales period, where we're including sales around Christmas and New Year's and also Thanksgiving, so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming e-commerce related Google Ads training videos, why don't you subscribe to my channel and also hit that notification bell so that you never miss out when I release a new teaching video. And just before we go, all of those optimization actions that are listed out, for them to work properly, you need to make sure that you've got your Google Shopping campaign set out in the correct way. And so that you know how to do this correctly, why don't you go through and watch this video right here, where I take you through the steps of how to structure and set up a Google Shopping campaign the right way so that you can see profits for your business. Thank you again, see you next time.